Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. Uh, the purpose of this video is to describe uh, how the normal force relates to a free body when friction is involved. So what we're looking at here, we've got this um, picture here. Imagine this man pushing this box here uh, in such a way that the box is staying, staying static. So it's not moving, we've got no uh, velocity, it's not sliding across the floor. And I'm gonna start thinking about well, what might the free body of this uh, look like? So the first force I'm going to put in here is the gravitational force. I'm going to go ahead and draw my force vectors in blue today. And the gravitational force goes at what's called the center of mass. For this box, if it's a nice uniform geometry, that would go at its geometric center. So I'm going to go ahead and put a force vector there for that down, label that mg. Right. In addition to that, we've got this person pushing to the right. So there's an, uh, an applied force. Now they're pushing with two hands. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just kind of say, well, there's probably one force here, one force here. I'm going to kind of add those together, put that force right in between these to the right. That'll be good enough for this example. I call this F here, large F. That's the force this person's applying. Now you'll notice if the box doesn't uh, accelerate, we know that there's another force that's got to basically counteract that. That force acts along this surface and that's what we call a frictional force. So I'm going to go ahead and put that force vector in. And at the surface we also have uh, a normal force. Now in you know, I teach college physics, and I also teach the uh, calc-based physics. And, you know, in a physics class, where that normal goes usually is not that important. In most free bodies, we might draw it maybe something like uh, this, maybe like it's acting at the center. I'm going to go ahead and do that. So, you know, in a lot of physics texts, you might see a free body that looks something like this. And again, forces have what's called a line of action. You can really draw a force vector anywhere you want along that line. So what that means, like this mg, if I wanted to raise that up there and draw that so it was pointing down, I could do that. This normal force, I could draw it down here, like it's pushing up like this. I can do that. You can move these force vectors anywhere along their line of action. But you can't move them against their line of action, or at least you know you, you shouldn't move them against their line of action. Uh, and one thing I'd like to point out is when we inspect this free body, notice that, sure, the net force can be zero. This force uh, added to this force vectorally would add to zero. This force added to this force adds, could add to zero vectorally. But notice that if I sum moments about that point right there, and again, this is an important point, right there, that the frictional force goes through that point, no moment. The gravitational force goes through that point, no moment. The normal backtracks through that point, apparently, no moment. But this one doesn't. This one acts along this line. So this force is creating a net moment about this point in my free body. And that actually is indicating a problem. By observation, this thing's not accelerating, so it can't have a net force or a net moment. So the million dollar question is, why do we have a net moment in our free body? Again, if you sum moments about that point, this force times this distance gives a clockwise uh, moment. But this thing's not accelerating linearly, left or right, or rotationally. Then the question is, how can that be, or why is that? Well, the answer to the riddle is that this normal here really is not in the correct place. So I'm going to go back and redraw it. I'm going to get rid of it. What happens when this person starts pushing, you have a pressure underneath here, right? Pressure is force per unit area. And if the person was not applying any force at all, the pressure would basically be the same anywhere along here. So the force distribution would look maybe something like this if the person wasn't applying any force and this box had uniform geometry and other assumptions. And then in a case like that, the normal would go at the geometric center. However, if this person applies some force, you'll notice that gives this box kind of a tendency to tip. That decreases the pressure over here, increases the pressure over here. So that pressure curve now might look more like this. And what, what does this mean? Well, imagine if somebody had their toe here. Let's say Bill has his toe under this spot and Sam has his toe under this spot. Uh, Sam would be in more pain than Bill. The normal force goes at the um, 
centroid of this geometry, you'll notice there's more area over here than there is over here. And what that means is the normal force actually is applied somewhere to the right. So I'm going to go ahead and redraw my normal in blue, except I'm going to draw it kind of offset. Now, by how much? Well, that kind of varies problem to problem. For now, I'm just going to say a, an amount x. So really, the correct free body in this situation has the applied force, the mg, the frictional force tangent to the surface, and a normal at an unknown location. So when you're drawing free bodies involving friction, take a little time to think about where that normal force actually should be applied, where its line of action should be. And now we can write a series of equations for this. Sum of all forces x direction equals zero. Sum of all forces y direction equals zero. Sum of all moments about any point also has to equal zero. And what that would typically do is usually we can um, calc use a moment equation to find this distance here. All right, a little review about the frictional force. Hopefully you've watched my previous videos about friction. And the frictional force is related to the um, normal force by the coefficient of friction. Remember, if you've watched my videos, you have you have what's called the static coefficient of friction. You use the static when you're calculating the maximum possible frictional force. Right? Although it does not occur in statics, the class statics a lot, you also have what's called sliding friction. And in that case, you use what's called the kinetic coefficient of friction. The third possible case is perhaps the frictional force is less than the uh, sliding frictional force, in which case the coefficient of friction really is not relevant and you usually get the frictional force from the free body. But again, the point of this particular video was to, um, especially when you're looking at problems of great detail, you draw your frictional force and typically the normal force will be at an unknown location. Now, um, when we find that location, if that location ends up being on this box somewhere, that's perfectly fine. But imagine now that I solve for x, and this x ended up putting this thing all the way over here. All right, there's a physical interpretation of that that needs to be understood. If this force has to be way out here so that the net moment is zero, well, this force can't be applied to the box way out here. And what that would physically mean is the box would tip over. And that, I'm sure, will be uh, relevant. I'll try to write some examples up that demonstrate that. But anyway, again, the point of the video was basically about this, that in general, when you're dealing with friction, that normal force will be at an unknown location. So your free bodies have to reflect that, and that unknown will typically be part of the problem. So hope this video helps. I'll make a couple more on examples. Have a great day.